Uh, this is looking at the beginning of the sports nutrition unit in your BTEC and your CTEC. And we can look straight away at the balanced diet. Uh, we can look at carbohydrates mainly today, um, as they're one of the biggest groups, as you can see. But they're, of course, as part of this balanced diet. Now, this is a picture you may have seen. It's the government's Eat Well plate. Um, and it's got some things on there that you don't have to eat. But just remember, these percentages are what they're saying you should eat as a guideline. I mean, having a look at there, dairy and fatty and sugary foods, you don't actually have to eat. Um, fatty and sugary foods, you certainly don't have to eat. It's just that they are part of a modern diet, and the government are just telling you you shouldn't have more than 8%. So don't get confused and start telling your friends you need to be eating 8%, at least 8% sugary and fatty foods. That's the first thing I should say. And also the dairy uh, section again that's controversial are humans designed to eat dairy i'm not so sure but 15 percent they're saying no more why is that well dairy is often very fatty as well as having having vitamins and minerals and protein in it it can be very fatty however the other three are definite so you need these three areas they are called your macronutrients because they are big uh, the carbohydrates they're your classics your bread, your potatoes, we'll look at those in more details in a minute. Your fruit and vegetables are your other third. And then your protein is your 15%. Now, of course, you can get protein in many different forms. You'll see meat, fish, beans, pulses, and we'll break that down in a further video. So let's look at the 33%, the third you're meant to get uh, of your diet through carbohydrates. Okay, so first of all, Again, we've got our macronutrients and our micronutrients. Micronutrients are what they say on the tin, incredibly small, but as important. Vitamins and minerals help the body work. They help the cells function. And we'll go into that in a further video. The macronutrients, whenever you hear a dietitian or someone say macros, it's carbohydrate, protein, and fat. So carbohydrates, typically, where do you get them from? Well, there's eight sources there are many more okay but bread rice pasta potatoes all fruits vegetables are a fantastic uh, source of carbohydrate people often think oh it's only uh, fiber in vegetables not at all lots of carbohydrate we'll talk about more what sort of carbohydrate a bit later sweets and biscuits now carbohydrate is anything essentially that contains glucose how you have to break it down is another matter I mean, sweets and biscuits are what we'll call simpler uh, carbohydrates, whereas, say, vegetables, um, rice, bread are slightly more complex. And that just means how much you have to break down the source of carbohydrate to get to the glucose. So I'm not saying sweets and biscuits are as good for you as vegetables, but I'm saying they are a source of carbohydrate. So just be aware we're not talking about health at the moment, just what is a carbohydrate. This diagram if you follow it, it's just the, the journey of carbohydrate through the body. We're starting with bread up there in the right hand corner. C6H1206, uh, you may come across in other subjects, that is your chemical formula for glucose. And glucose is what travels in the blood. So you can't have any bigger forms of carbohydrate there traveling in the blood, you've got to digest it down to glucose. And as you might imagine, that will vary on the speed that you digest. Uh, so let's say you digest your bread there, it goes into the blood, where does it go? Well, you see the lines there going to the brain. The glucose, the glucose goes straight to the brain and is used by the brain. Glucose has to be used by the brain and the brain would die without glucose. So if you restrict your blood flow, we see uh, portions of brain dying off. Obviously, you're getting oxygen from the blood as well, which is vital, but also glucose. It also goes to the muscles. We see bottom right-hand corner. That's probably what your back looks like. But 75% will go to the muscles. Oh, sorry. I'm a bit ahead of myself. You'll also see that the... You also see that the glucose goes to the liver and to the muscles. If the glucose isn't used straight away, it will get stored. And that's where glycogen comes from. It is stores of glucose. And most of that glycogen will be stored in the muscles, 75%. And another 25% can be stored in the liver. 
Now, if you run out of glycogen storage room, which can happen, where does the excess go? Well, bottom left, you can see it. It goes not just on your bottom, but it goes all around the body, adipose tissue, under the skin, what we'll call fat. There is fat in other places in your body, but under the skin is where we notice it the most. So if you eat too much carbohydrate, you will get fat, you will store fat. It is converted. That's a great point for all you dietitians out there. You don't have to eat fat to get fat. You can just eat too much carbs. But you've got to eat enough carbs to get your energy. So it's a difficult balance. Okay, so just looking at the forms of carbohydrates, you've got your simple carbohydrates, your monosaccharides. They are single molecule uh, sugars, very quick to digest. You've probably heard of the top one, glucose, but there's others, fructose found in fruit, galactose, you'll find that in milk. And if you go on to disaccharides, again, very small molecules, only, only two molecules bonded together, so very small sugars, uh, sucrose, lactose, maltose, again, they will digest incredibly quickly. Uh, just looking there at beer in the bottom right, where do you get your beer belly? Well, it's not the beer, it is the sugars, the maltose in that beer that you will break down, and if you don't use it, because you're sitting in the pub, you will probably store it as fat. Okay, what we've got to get good at is looking at food packets and working out how much carbohydrate is in there. But as we said earlier, there are different types of carbohydrate. The simple carbohydrates, those mono and disaccharides, those quick to digest carbohydrates, simple ones, and the complex ones, the ones that are slow to digest, that we think of as more healthy carbohydrates. Well, on your food packet, it will say of which sugars, and sugars means simple, okay? So per 100 grams, it will have amount of grams per 100 grams, and that's how many sugars you have there. Now, if you take away that by the total weight, you'll get a percentage of that food product that is carbohydrate. And also, if you take away the of which sugars from the carbohydrates uh, weight, you will find out the proportion that is simple and complex. So it will only tell you what is simple, and you have to work out the rest which is complex. It's just taking away the sugars from the carbohydrate weight. So have a look on the back of your cereal packets, your food packets, and you can work out, is it a sugary simple carbohydrate or is it mainly complex carbohydrate? And we've got to get good at doing that if we're going to design good diet plans. Now we're going on to this idea of good and poor sources of carbohydrate. Now, as you can see on the left, we're getting a wholemeal pastas, breads, rice as the good sources. Why is that? Why are vegetables and pulses better than these uh, white bread, pasta, rice products? Well, it's about processing. These days, when you look in the supermarket, you're surrounded by the white products. Why is that? Well, they've been processed and they taste sweeter because they're more sugary, they're more simple. They've been processed, bits have been taken away from the grain, uh, from the rice, whatever that product is. So your white bread and your white pasta do not have the whole of the content in them that's supposed to be in there. So actually you are missing out on vitamins and minerals, fiber, and also more complex carbohydrate. I mean, white pasta isn't as simple as say sugar, but it will digest and dissolve into sugar a lot quicker than wholemeal pasta. So depending on what you want to get, you can certainly use both, but if you want slow digesting, slow releasing pasta that has more fiber and more vitamins and minerals, then wholemeal pasta is the one for you. They take longer to cook, they're not as sweet, which is why they're not as popular, but they're incredibly useful. Okay, looking here at glycemic index. Now, if this isn't a term you've seen before, it's a way of judging foods on how quick they can be broken down. So we were saying earlier you have complex and simple carbohydrates well that's one or the other the glycemic index rates them so you can have a sliding scale of how quick they are how do you remember what's what well low is slow that's the way to remember it if there's a low number on your food it will take a long time to digest high number quick so if you have vegetables they're going to have a lot lower number than something like uh, sweets or ripe fruit as you see up there so you can always look up your food on the glycemic index and work out exactly 
how quick it is. And what we tend to do in the, the modern Western world is eat too many foods that are high in uh, GI, high glycemic index, because we all digest them quickly into sugar, and our sugars will fluctuate, we'll be more prone to obesity, type 2 diabetes, and you can see your cakes, your sweets, your fizzy drinks with sugar in, they're the ones that are very high. So you probably want to avoid those wherever possible. Okay, now what you guys are going to have to do now is look more in detail at the functions of carbohydrates. Now we know roughly what they are. Now you're going to have to go away and look at this and research it yourself, but here are six ways that carbohydrates functions in the body. Now obviously energy production is huge. And I'll give you a hint, carbohydrate is a preferred energy source for the, the body. Why is that? Why is it a good source of energy for the body? And if you're looking down there at sparing proteins, preventing ketosis, why would you want to save your proteins and not break down your proteins? And why would you want to keep those in the diet and not use them for energy? So have a think about that and have a research into that. Flavour and sweeteners. Carbohydrate does make things sweeter on the tongue. Uh, we'll know that if you uh, eat sugary sweets or anything like that. And that can be useful in the food industry. It also has more of a biological uh, function as well. And it will help, you help the body recognise certain things. It will help the immune system recognise things. It will help enzymes function. So you need to research how that happens. It also helps break down fats. So another reason why carbohydrates is not the enemy, it will actually help you break down fatty acids, which is clearly a good thing. And also dietary fibre. Well, isn't fibre a different thing? Well, possibly, but fibre is actually a form of carbohydrate. It just can't be digested. And lots of uh, sources of carbohydrate will have a lot of dietary fibre in them. So if you're eating lots of complex carbs, you will be getting dietary fibre, which is kind of made up of the same components of carbohydrate, but just can't be digested. And we will be looking at further videos as to how fibre has a major function in the body. OK, until next time, I'll see you later. Uh, this is looking at the beginning of the sports nutrition unit in your B-Tech and your C-Tech. And we can look straight away at the balanced diet. Uh, we can look at